Sorry about that. Oh, 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 I need... Sorry about that. My iPad um, died even though it was on the charger. I guess it was too low. And I just got off a session. So I guess it just was like, thanks, but no thanks. Oh, 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 I need... Yeah. Hi, Kings Brit. You're all I need. All I need. Hi guys, I was going to say good morning, but it's not morning, it's afternoon for sure. Hi Kings Brit, hi Miguel, hi Tony, Edward, Kellen, Tasia, Bain, Ethan. Hey guys, um, yeah, I don't really know what you guys want me to do. If you want me to play something, play as in play scales while I sing scales, I would be glad to do that today. Um, if you had just had some vocal questions, um, feel free to ask. I just wanted to, um, bring myself, um, on here and say hi. And just remind you guys that I have some events coming up. I would love for you to be a part of them. Um, if you are in the New York area, I have a, um, a workshop coming up in New York City. Um, all the information is on my website. It's June 30th. Saturday, June 30th from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Hopefully you can make it out to that. Um, and I'm pretty sure if you use the code subscriber, you can get 30% off. There's also, um, sorry, there's also my online vocal workshop that everyone all over the world, no matter where you are, if you can get on this YouTube, you can get on my vocal workshop with Callie Day. If you don't know who Callie Day is, look her up. She has a mind-blowing vocal ability and we're going to be talking about um, ad-libs, runs, singing through the passaggio, everything that it's going to take to get you to the next level in your singing. I'm really excited about that. Um, so yeah, you can get all that at my website, delisa.com. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, Liliana. Okay, I can answer questions. Just ask. I'm desperately looking for my glasses. I have no idea where they are. Okay. <sighs> so annoying. Let's see. I have a question. When I'm singing headphone volume, I can do runs. Well. Headphone volume? I can do runs well, but when I try it with chest voice, I can't do it as well. You need to practice in your chest voice. I mean, that's kind of one of those things where I would have to hear you because... Um... You know, I just don't know. It takes a different level of control to be able to sing runs in chest voice than it does in head voice. So it's a different mechanism. It feels different in your body. And you're just going to have to learn the differences and, and make sure you have both of those correct. Practice, practice. How do you, do I know? Yeah, I think Avery Sunshine is an amazing vocalist, songwriter, producer. Musician, she's great. All I need. Um, insert name here. How long does it take to improve your voice with regular practice? I would say, Zen, um, because everyone starts at a different skill level, everybody has different impasses that they come at vocally um sometimes i'll hear a singer and i'm like oh you only need a couple things you'll be fine but those couple of things that they struggle with are so difficult for them to get over 
a year later they may still be struggling with that. It may take them a year and a half to get past this particular point. So it's different for everybody. Oh, vocal analysis. Okay, I think about it. I want to learn to do runs. I try to just try to do what I hear. But it's a bit, though. You may want to retype that, Liliana. I'm not quite sure what you're saying. Can you do vocal analysis on male singers with lower registers when you have time? Like who? What male singer with a lower register is in pop music? Personal life aside, what do you think of R. Kelly as a singer? <laughs> I wouldn't even mention his personal life. Um, what I think of him as a singer, I think he has his moments where he's really good and he has his moments where he's not so good. That's what I think. Is it wrong to be a background singer instead of a lead? No, of course not. Background singers are actually a lot of times a lot more skilled and more versatile than the lead singer because you, you kind of have to, you have to be a chameleon. So, um, that's a great career. And if you can be a background singer, then you're at a very, very high skill level. Faith Evans, a little mole. I mean, why can't we all be great? No, I have never tried to get a record deal. That was never my focus. Um, I always just wanted to be really good. Um, and I didn't try to get the record deal because I think being good is longer lasting than a record deal. The record deals last three years. Being good lasts a lifetime. So um, if a record deal comes as a result of being really good, then that's cool too. But is that something I would pursue? I would only pursue that if it meant, I would want something more so management, like somebody that could just take the day-to-day -day operation of being an artist off of my hands, because that's something I'm not interested in, is the day-to-day -day operations. I just kind of want the phone call that says, you need to be here, or I've set this up for you, or whatever. That's really, that would be the benefit for me. Um, I don't really know if there's a lot of money in record deals nowadays, um, but even if there were, that was still not, I wanted to be good, and like I said, if a record deal came as a result, then I would be really cool with that. But record deals are so fleeting. Uh, tips for learning how to harmonize. Um, you really just have to put yourself in that situation over and over again and challenge yourself. Um, if you're not singing, well, first of all, the funny thing is a lot of these skills, if you learn them from, if you're in a, like a church setting where people, you're constantly hearing three and four part harmony, you don't even realize that you're picking up and learning things. So as an adult, I think it would be an uphill battle, but I think you would have to start listening to music and start picking out different instruments and picking out different lines, vocal lines and listening to them intently so that you can even learn to see how the music is put together and how it's organized. And then from there, once you've learned to focus on one thing at a time, it's going to be a lot easier for you to pick those things out and repeat them. Uh, Luther vocal analysis. Luther. Luther does not have a deep voice. Luther has had quite a high tessitura and, and vocal range. But I know what you're saying. He has a warm voice, but it's not really deep. My bad. I was saying that I want to learn runs, but it's a bit tough. But I try to do what I hear, but still a bit tough. Got it. Yeah, um, you may just need extra help. I mean, that's what vocal training is for, right? Somebody can, you know, tell you, well, okay, you try to do that run, but that run has five or six notes and you only sang four. Something like that. What is that? What is that? I see a red dot. Oh, it's on my... 
There was a red dot on my phone. I thought it was on my wall. That was weird. Sorry about that. I've been, it's Daz. Hi. Do I know you personally? I've been well, thank you. Danny, hi. Do you agree female singers generally sing better than males? I do. I think in general, women are better than men. Thoughts on Shawn Mendes? I don't know who that is. If you had Kiki White as your client, what would you work with her on? Breath support, probably. Making sure everything she did is smooth, as smooth as possible. If it could get any smoother than it was, than it is, then we would work on that. Um, and probably just experiment with warmth as well. But definitely breath support to just make everything sound um, bigger and warmer, I guess. Unless she had a specific problem, because I, you know. Did I ever measure my vocal range? Um, kind of, I measure my vocal range. I was kind of surprised the other day, because I hit an E6. I could probably go high. I mean, I know you guys consider whistle range, but I don't think whistle is real range. So if you go, if you start doing that, I'm higher. But like a proper voice. I go up to an E6, which I was surprised. I thought it was E flat. And then I'm pretty sure I can go to, what is it, a B flat 2? I think I can go lower than that. No, I can't. Uh, yeah, uh, so B flat 2. Let's see. Lots of divas like Patti LaBelle hit high notes in this piercing way. Yes, it's very shrill. But not exactly. My question is just uh, lots of divas like Patti LaBelle hit high notes in this piercing way, almost shrill and scream like, but not exactly. My question is, is this a something natural? It is something natural. Um, I definitely think it's something. I mean, you're asking if it's fabricated. I'm not sure if you're saying is what you're hearing something that the engineer is doing versus them. It's definitely coming directly from them, so I would say it's natural. Um, are they doing something to create that piercing sound? Yes, which is why I said if I were to work with Kiki Wyatt, it would probably be on warmth because I don't think she really experiments with singing warm that much. Like you said, everything tends to be very in your face and shrill. Um, But that doesn't really work with for like ballads, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. Oh, Liliana, I have a friend, she's an awesome singer, so she recorded a run and told me to just try it. I mean, that works if she sings it slow enough and you can hear all the notes. What do I think of Sam Smith? I think he's good. I don't really have any strong thoughts. I agree about learning to sing in church. I've never taken any classes, but I know how to blend my voice and stay in tune because I have learned that skill from hearing music. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Hi, Jonathan. How do you look after your voice? Um... I'm not the most disciplined with how I speak. So if my voice is going to be fatigued, it's usually going to be because I talk too loud or I talk too much because I love to talk. And so if I really wanted to save my voice, I would kind of talk a little bit more like this where it's more supported and then it just sounds more melodic. But I'm not going to talk like this because it feels so fake. Um, but that's probably how I should speak in order to really take care of my voice. So the other things that I do to take care of my voice is staying really hydrated. Um, working out works really well. I don't know the physiology of it, but I just feel like working out really warms your voice and keeps your voice very elastic. Um, I try to eat well, to be honest with you. 
I try to eat well, I stay hydrated. I don't um, drink caffeine at all. I'm allergic to caffeine, so I stay away from caffeine. I stay away from allergy medicines. Um, I stay away from anything that's gonna make me dehydrated because the way that I speak is already bad enough. If I add to that things that are gonna dehydrate my voice, I'm, it's not gonna be good. So um, that's what I do to take care of my voice. You gotta make sure you sleep. Um, I drink a lot of tea. Actually, I haven't been drinking tea lately, probably because it's summer, but I drink a lot of room temperature bottled water. In fact, there's like three bottles on my desk right now. Um, and like, you know, I eat foods that have a lot of water content. So like avocados, cucumbers, tomatoes, um, fruits in general, like that's the kind of stuff that I do. And I try to stay away from my beloved cheese, things like that. I, the good thing is I don't really suffer with acid reflux. So there are certain, you know, things that I have that are, that kind of help me out. I absolutely know who Gerald Levert was. What were my thoughts on him? I think he was a good singer. I think he had a distinct, um, he had a distinct approach to singing. Um, it wasn't necessarily my style because I tend to like a smoother approach and he was, he was really aggressive. He kind of had that 70s vibe about his approach um but I, I, in general his voice he had a great voice mm. how would you recommend i help our choir adults who are set in ways hear the notes if it can even be taught they tend to sing beneath the notes hey 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 i don't know homie you may just want to pull back from even teaching three-part harmony like maybe your first step would just be to get them singing in unison or two-part harmony um, first. And and honestly, I mean, even though they're, you're saying they're older and they're set in their ways, perhaps try to introduce, like, instead of saying, oh, I want you to sing it this way, you can say something like, sing it with a smile, because smiling at naturally lifts your soft palate. So having them do something that they don't know that you're changing their ways, but it's just kind of like, oh, okay, I guess that... Um, you know, that sounds simple enough to smile while we're singing, and that will give you the sound that you, you're looking for. But God bless you with that. Jeez, Louise. I'm almost finished writing for my demo album. Good for you. Have I ever had a bad vocal injury? No, I have not. But I did have a time where I was um, struggling vocally, and it was more so um, stress-related than anything else. I was so lazy, so I kept singing tenor, but like now I'm just trying to sing. Good for you. Who is better? Um, I mean, you're saying Mary Mary or Trinity 5-7. You know, those are like five singers. I think they're all amazing. The girl that sings super, I can't think of their names in Trinity 5-7 anymore, but I don't really think, I just think they're different sides of the same coin. They all sound good. I'm sorry, I don't really like compare singers like that. Like, I don't say who's better, Jasmine or Brandy. Like, they're at the same level. They just do it differently, but they're the, they're the same level. I would think they're both elite. Um, tips on avoiding voice cracking while singing? Um, again, that's a big question. Usually, if your voice is cracking, it's because you have a lot of tension in the base of your tongue the root of your tongue, and you probably have to relax that um, and learn the inverse. I need to read more, guys. What am I trying to say? The inverse action, for lack of a better word, of lifting the soft palate and relaxing your tongue, making your tongue feel dead. So you can sing through your breaks. see sorry for the weird wording in my question do these divas use a certain technique yes they're using a certain technique is it necessary to have a high soft palate in order to sing well yes um in order to sing well and in order to sing have versatility yes you have to sing like you're at the beginning of a yawn or even like a 
it's uncomfortable at first, but you're basically training your body to always have that space. Hi, Anuli from Nigeria. Thank God I found you. Your lessons are helping me tremendously. I actually have issues with so much tension in my throat while singing and even talking. Help! I wish there was something that I could say that would help you. Um, I just know that tension is a result of something going stiff, right? So then your job is to keep things released. And there's things you can do to keep them released, like singing like this. Okay, so that's a tip right there. Do you have any advice for people who want to become a professional singer or how to get there? You know, my advice for someone who wants to become a professional singer is to sing. You know, I heard, um, I saw a quote from Steve Harvey one time saying, don't say that you're something, but you don't do it, right? So if you're a singer, then you need to find places to sing and you need to be doing it all the time, whether you're getting paid or not, because this is who you are, right? You're a singer. So create opportunities to sing, um, take opportunities to sing and do it often. And what's going to happen is as you continue to do that, more people are going to ask you to do it. Then guess what? The more people start asking you to do it, then you're going to say, hold up, my time is worth something. You're going to start charging to do it. So that's how you come up the ranks. But you first have to keep putting yourself out there and actually sing. And, you know, if people want you, they're going to ask you to come for sure. No one's going to hear a good singer and be like, eh. Yes, Angel, I love her voice. Uh, do I have to, Jonathan? What's your opinion on how to recover from laryngitis? Don't sing. When you have laryngitis, itis of anything is inflammation, right? So that's inflammation of the laryngeal folds, right? Of your vocal cords. So how do you get over that? You have to let it rest. Um, sometimes it's a two weeks. Sometimes you just have to not speak at all. That's how. You can't just drink a magic potion and make swelling go down. You got to rest your voice. Glenn Lewis. Oh, Glenn Lewis sounds like that's if you're talking about Glenn Lewis from the 90s, I can't even remember his voice. Is there any way to sing in a darker and more husky tone when you belt? Is it all about the input? A darker and more husky tone? For most people, their voice naturally gets a little kind of dark and kind of husky. Um not always, but it's usually gonna be a more intense sound than you singing in head voice. I think best practice is to not try to manipulate that into a husky tone because you got to remember husky means airy, which means you're letting too much air go through your vocal cords, which means you're setting yourself up for vocal damage. So, you know, don't manipulate your chest voice because that's the fastest way to vocal fatigue and vocal damage. All right. Tips on falsetto. How do I apply it on a high note? What do you mean? How do you? I, I'm sorry. I don't understand. How do you? How do I apply falsetto to a high note? Uh, usually you feel it, right? You feel it right here. I don't know if I even have a falsetto. You, usually if I tell people to sing as if the sound is coming out of the top of their head, they're able to create that sound. I don't know if that helps. Max, is belting best done in an even mix or should you lighten your mix the higher the note? Um, is belting best done in an even mix or should you light? It depends. Um, I don't, I'm funny about mixes and stuff like that. Sometimes I'm a little confused with the jargon. Um, all I know is that. I'm not even warmed up to keep going any further than that. But the idea is that vocal cord compression that you are that you experience on the mm, ah, 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 you want to keep that compression the same.
that um, vibration the same and you should be able to get up to the higher notes. Um, you should always be aiming for it to be high up here. Now, does that make it, make it a lighter mix? I don't know, whatever you want to call it. I just know that the sound should, as you're, as it's getting higher, your soft palate should be lifting. Again, that's what I was talking about, that inverse action that continues to happen as you're hitting higher notes. Um, do I consider Leandria Johnson brilliant? I think so. She's a pretty great singer. She does some pretty cool things. And a lot of what she does, for some reason, even though it's familiar, it's like unexpected. So I like that, you know, and I think that's what everybody likes. It's like you kind of already know what to expect, but somehow she still manages to like surprise you and you go, what? Wow. So, yeah, I would say so. Thoughts on the weekend? I have no thoughts. I don't. I don't really know. I've heard his recordings. Um... And he kind of has that light, what, Michael Jackson type of a voice. But I have never actually heard him sing. Because, I mean, you can re anybody can record, right? But is he actually really a singer? Like, I don't, I don't know, because I've never heard him actually sing. Can you give advice on how to improve note accuracy? I tend to be flat sometimes. Well, that can... Um, by the way, since you guys are on the line, let me just say again that you can go to my site, delisa.com. I have two workshops coming up, one on the 23rd with Miss Callie Day. We're going to talk about runs and ad-libs, and the second one's going to be in New York City. So sign up for those. You can use code subscriber. That will work for the New York one. Anyway, can you give advice on how to improve ac note accuracy? Um, that's usually a breath support issue and a soft palate issue. Your soft palate needs is probably needs to be higher. You probably need to relax the base of your tongue more, and you probably need to be supporting. Why do it? You said you would. Uh, how do I sing like David Phelps? God bless you. Love your channel. Are you ever gonna do more vocal analysis? I guess. I mean, you guys wear me out with that. You're gold. Thank you. I always go for a distorted way of belting, and the next day my voice sounds so cracked. <laughs> Aw. I'm somebody who gets stuck in their head voice, and I always have to remind myself to go to chest voice. Well, I just get better at this. Yes, you just have to practice. You got to be intentional. You just got to practice. Aw, uh, thoughts on Prince. He is, uh, I don't know. I don't really know. Like, he had a lot of voice, for sure. Um, it's like he was a bass, too. And then he had his great falsetto. But other than that, I don't have anything. I don't really think anything about Prince. My vocal trinity. You are retarded. That's ridiculous. How do you get over stage fright or singing in front of people? Again, that's one of those things that I've been doing it for so long. I mean, not to say that I don't get nervous, but I've been singing in front of people since I was four, you know? Um, how do I get over stage fright and singing in front of people? One thing that I like to do is talk about um, staying in your body. That's one thing that I learned from my teacher, staying in my body. So what does that mean? Um, if you notice, you'll see some people start jumping or doing jumping jacks before they get on stage. And that's really good because you start to kind of feel like you're hyperventilating or you're breathing too shallow. So, you know, doing jumping jacks, doing something that makes you active, forces you to take in a proper deep breath. And your body needs oxygen at those times. And once you have oxygen, it also helps to engage your diaphragm. So as long as you stay connected to your diaphragm, then it will help to regulate your breathing, which will help to regulate your voice. Vocal trinity. Let's get back to that question. Um, vocal trinity. I don't know if I have one. Who are the three people? Definitely Whitney Houston. And honestly, when I listen to older Mary Mary records, I realize a lot of my vocals come from them. Um... And I would be stuck between Yolanda Adams, Karen Sheard, and Kimberell. 
Hi, I love your voice and your intellect. No, I have not listened to So Hyung. What turned me off from vocal analysis videos? I think what turned me off is that as a singer, right? Um, I just kind of put myself in other people's shoes and was like, I wouldn't want nobody talking about me. Like, I know what my vocal faults are, but every singer does their best to try to only put their best foot forward. So then for somebody to be able to hear and and articulate all the things they're doing wrong and why and what they could have and should have and would have done better, um, I don't care how much money you have. That just doesn't feel good. So that's part of it. The other thing is, I actually, a lot of these, I don't really care that much. You know, like when I hear people sing, like I hear all of these things. Um, and I thought it was cool at first to kind of talk about what I hear. But when people start, you know, responding to me and feeling like they need to argue with me, it's like, I, I'm, I don't even know what you're arguing about. I made the video. I uploaded it. I don't even remember what I said. And you're trying to still engage me, you know, and I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't know if you guys noticed, like I, I, I love singing, but it's, it's this much of this much of my life. You know what I'm saying? Like my real life, um, is a lot bigger than me talking about singing. So to literally throw myself into defending my thoughts on Christina Aguilera's voice is just kind of like, come on. Hello. Hi, Lo Laurel from Liberia. I got laryngitis for 10 years. You must have had something else. That was not laryngitis. No, laryngitis is acute. That comes and goes. You had something else. You definitely had something else. You must have had nodules, polyps. You had something else. That was not laryngitis. I feel like my head voice is weak. How can I get a strong head voice in a falsetto? I hope you went to a laryngologist to find what you really had. Because that, that was not laryngitis. I feel like my head voice is weak. How can I get a strong head voice in falsetto? And hello. Larry, um, I think it's something you have to practice and stay forward. How do you stay connected to your diaphragm? Well, your diaphragm is what pulls down in order for air to come out, right? So all these breathing exercises that we do as singers, like... Or... All of those things, um, yeah, and, and like I said, when you speed up your heart rate, you start working out or whatever, you'll feel the diet. You'll, you'll feel that, well, I don't want to say you'll feel the diaphragm, but it forces you to take in more air, so you're going to be breathing the way a singer should breathe. And you should connect to that and keep that going. Something theoretical. How does a diet affect the voice? Um... Well, we kind of know all the basic things, right? Well, diet can affect the voice. For example, if you have acid reflux and you constantly are eating things that are acidic, you will eventually just kind of burn your vocal cords, right? And even if they, it, it, it'll eventually wear on them. But at first, what's going to happen is you're just going to constantly feel hoarse because of it. Um, diet also affects your vocal cords because if you eat something greasy, by the way, chocolate is greasy. Um, it also has a lot of times, it has a lot of um, dairy in it. Um, that creates mucus and while you're singing all that's gonna come up so that's how diet affects your voice diet affects your voice as much as it affects your body so if you eat things that um, make you feel lethargic your voice is just not gonna be in the same shape as, as it would have if you'd have eaten something that has phytonutrients and gives you life while we're on here let me just parenthetically say go to the lease.com i have two workshops coming up on the 23rd and the 30th the 23rd is online so everyone can attend and it's the one with cali day and the one in new york city is june 30th and i hope to see you there so let's see thoughts on genuine no do you think mariah carey can have a comeback on her next album She's a great writer and she has great producers at her fingertips. I don't see why not. I mean, is she gonna, I don't know what you mean by comeback though. I don't know if you mean vocal comeback, um, but can she write hits? Absolutely. Who is your favorite male singer? Um, I think I have a few favorite male singers. Um, Luther Vandross had a just beautiful, beautiful multifaceted voice. Love him. No one else is coming to mind right now. But there are some really great singers out there.
Thank you, insert name here, for getting it. Right, Max, exactly. They they treat my criticism like they're getting paid to argue about it. It's like, who cares? So you should check out Johnny Orlando and Kenzie. Yeah, I've never heard of them, Andrew. <laughs> Do you believe everyone can sing? No, I'm not one of those people. I am not one of those people that believes everyone can sing. And I, I don't believe that because I have a daughter who at seven or eight months was able to do call and response. Oh, McDonald had a farm. And she was able to go E-I-E-I-O. So if you are 29 and you can't accomplish what my eight-month-old can accomplish, you can't sing. You know, I think that there's a point where we have to kind of be honest with ourselves. There's something else that you can invest in that you'd be great at. You know, and it's not to say that you can't improve, but the learning curve, the amount that it would take to bring you to ground zero, it would take years. And if you're up to take years and thousands and thousands of dollars to just get to the point of being able to get through, you know, the ABC song on pitch or sing, you know, the simplest song in karaoke on pitch, then, you know, be my guest. But I would imagine there's something else in life that you can invest that kind of time and attention to that you would skyrocket. That's just my thoughts. Kings Brit, you're welcome. Oh, by the way, um, there's something on here. I, and I'm sorry to be like this, but <laughs> there's something on here where you guys can even like send a tip. Like last time I was on here, people were giving me like a little $5 tips or whatever. So I accept blessings and offerings if you wanted to. I, th I think you have to like just click like there's some green dollar sign or something in the comments. If you guys wanted to say thank you by sending a donation, that would be awesome too. And my birthday is coming up July 4th, by the way. Ah, uh, let's see. I believe that my current vocal trinity for people who are more 2010s famous will be Jesse J, Jasmine Sullivan, and Jennifer Hudson. Yeah, ja Jasmine Sullivan. Yeah, yeah, I really love her. She, but um, I don't know if she'd be my trinity because I don't know if she. I I don't know if I feel like she's taught me how to sing. When I think of the trinity, I think of people that taught me something. Um, and, and it could only be because, you know, she's, she's so much younger, um, than me. I just wouldn't. It's becoming vegan. Yeah, absolutely. Being vegan is better for your voice for sure. You just feel better in general. How do I know I'm busy singing in mix and not in chest? Um, you'll feel it. There'll be less, um, it won't feel as intense. I guess. People mix those words up a lot, though. When they say mix, um, some people say mixed belt. When I think of a mixed belt, chat like, okay, technically chest voice is only really low, right? Like, uh, whatever. I messed up the minor scale. But what I'm getting at is, for the most part, people feel like once you pass like an F or G4 for a female, that now you're into a mixed belt. So, um, I don't, you know, I feel bad for people that are trying to really be self-taught and then they're trying to teach themselves based on these all these labels that are being thrown out there. I don't think these labels that are being thrown out there are more important than just understanding the feeling. You know, master the feeling of good singing, master the freedom of good singing, the placement of good singing, instead of trying to label, where am I right now? You know, I don't think that matters. Alicia Keys collaborated with James Bay on Us. You should watch the live performance. Okay, John Mayer is dope. Okay, thank you for your free time. I have to sign up to get ready for church. Oh, bye, God bless. Is shrill sounding kind of due to a lack of breath support? No, absolutely not. It's just where you place it. What I meant by comeback. Oh, well, she had a number one. Yeah, I don't see why she can't have a number one. What do you think is the hardest song to sing? I don't know. I think anything atonal. I think anything atonal is hard. 
What if a personal person has a beautiful voice and cannot sing in pitch? Yeah, that sucks. They cannot sing. I have a chorister who is. He has a huge voice but cannot sing on pitch. Then he can't sing. They have a beautiful voice. And I've seen people like that. They have really nice tones, but they struggle with musicality. They have a lack of that. Then they can't sing. Whereas, same thing, somebody with the converse, though, with somebody that doesn't have the best voice, you know, the most um, melodic voice or whatever, but they're, they sing everything perfectly. They're, if you got to think in a musical environment, who would you choose to sing with other instruments and other singers? You would choose the person that doesn't have the most beautiful voice but can get the job done, right? I don't know Georgia Smith, if that's how you say her name. What do you think of singing with a straw? I think that's great. Singing with twang. I think that those both things are great. The last comment I sent didn't mean to sound rude if it did. Sorry. I don't know what you're talking about, Andrew. It didn't sound rude. I just want you to know I I don't I don't <laughs> I appreciate your apology, but it didn't sound rude. Should your voice sound live in the mix? I think so. It should always sound live, though. Do you believe that everyone has a whistle register? Uh, I don't know. I don't think about whistle register that much, to be honest. But I would have to say no. Uh, I think Abby's great. What has happened to Lauren Hill's vocal flexibility? Her tone is still rich, but she can barely belt anymore. I don't know. I don't know what she's doing. I don't know if she smokes a lot of weed. I don't know if she drinks a lot of alcohol. That could, if she does, then that's what happens. Thanks for the advice. It actually really helped. Oh, well, you're welcome. No, I've never tried to break glass. My voice is trash, but my bitch is amazing due to eight years of piano lessons. How can you impersonate someone? I don't know. By the way, I love your channel. Oh, thank you for watching. I appreciate that. How do we sing with brass equality in our upper belt? Don't try to do that. Don't, don't try to change the quality of your belts. You must have not been here when I said that to somebody else earlier in this call. Don't try to change the quality of your belt. That is how you run into vocal issues. When you're trying to literally impersonate somebody and you're in the upper extremities of your range. Bad call. Wiggle your tongue. That's a tip for tongue tension. Push your tongue out of your mouth. And go like that. Uh, that's how. If you sleep with a fan, yes, sleeping with a fan is horrible for your voice. First of all, I hate fans. Okay, the only way I'm going to use a fan is if I'm beyond hot. I do not put on fans. And you definitely don't want to put on a fan. I just don't even know how people sleep with fans. Like, because if I were to do that, I would wake up totally stuffed up and not able to speak and or much less breathe. So, yes, that's a horrible idea. How does someone find their voice type? Rosalyn... First, you have to develop your voice, right? Because as your voice develops, your voice type will change because now you have more voice. Um, secondly, don't hinge so much of whether or not you're good on your voice type. Sing when you develop your voice, sing what works for your voice. You guys are so funny. How do I, how do I get my falsetto as strong as Patty LaBelle? I don't know, Malachi. I discovered you yesterday. What? I have hundreds of videos. You saw all my videos in one night. That's impressive. You discovered me yesterday. I've been on YouTube. I want to say this is like my 10th year. If it's not, it's my ninth year doing YouTube videos. So I don't know. Maybe you were a baby when I started. <laughs> it's kind of crazy because... I get inboxes from people who were like, you know, your YouTube channel inspired me to study vocal, um, vocal um, in college, and now I'm graduating. What? That's so cool. That's so cool. Or some people have been watching me since middle school, and now they're in college and they're working with me because they're out of music school. 
I mean, incredible. You, I could never have imagined the impact, you know? I literally was just reading out of my pedagogy notes. Who knew? Can you improve the tone of your voice? You cannot improve the tone of your voice. You can improve the way you use your voice. You cannot improve your tone. Celine Dion and Lara Fabian's approach to belting are very similar. I think anyone that belts well, all of their approaches to belting is similar. They all have the same approach. If you're doing it properly and if it sounds healthy, it's the same. You might just, I don't know who Lara Fabian is, but maybe their actual tone is the same. Uh, but anyone that's belting, I don't care if their voice is high, low. Celine Dion and Tony Braxton's approach is the same, you know? So that's what I'm saying. We got to get away from trying to sound like someone's voice or thinking because they sound like that, they must be doing something different. Healthy vocal technique that sounds free and that sounds like it's soaring, they're doing it the same way. It's not, it's not as mysterious as some would want you to think it is. It does take a lot of, um, I guess maybe you would say imagery, you know, like think like this or, you know, think high while you're going low. It does take a lot of that, but everyone's doing the same thing. Um, how do I sing for my diaphragm? Okay, well, I think what you're asking is how do you support with your diaphragm, right? Um, and that's really a process. I can't just say, okay, so if you ask me how to sing with your diaphragm, you can read how to sing with your diaphragm. I think the issue is how do you actually, you know, do it? How do you translate breathing exercises to actually incorporating them while you're singing? And that's something that's the process of self evaluation, self-discovery, um, learning what your body does and how your body responds to singing right now and what you're doing wrong and then undoing those things while adding good habits. What would I do if Whitney, Mariah, and Celine did a song together? You know Whitney's dead, right? Do you know music? Of course I know Music Soul Child. I think he's great. I'm a fan. I think Anita Baker and Patti LaBelle are great. Would you ever do more covers in the future? Sure. I sure would. Would you have any sugieres? Suggestions? Can you stay on live for a while? Your live is amazing. It is? Thanks. If you can sing on pitch... And does it mean you can sing? Sorry, I asked this, but my network was for Yes, I would say if you can sing on pitch, I would say you can sing. Can you sing? Are you like this gifted singer? No, but the thing is, if you can sing on pitch and you master breath support, so that means your singing is even, you are a reliable musician to me. If you know how to sing evenly, if you understand technique, and even though you might not have the best of voice, are you kidding? I would consider you a singer. Because you know how to use your instrument. My falsetto is actually very limited because I use my chest voice. When you say falsetto, I'm wondering if you're talking about head voice, but okay. You're probably singing in chest voice wrong. That's probably really the issue. Is there a specific exercise to tackle mucus? No, stop eating things that make you mucusy. So I'm saying diet has a huge effect on how you sing. Is changing the key of a song better for your voice than keeping it? Uh, a lot of times, yes. I change every key. I change everything. 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 Unless it's Stevie Wonder, Ribbon in the Sky, I change everything. Because I'm not about to kill myself out. Trying to sing nobody's song. When they recorded that song, they recorded a key that was perfect for that artist. If it was a different artist, it would have been a different key. I'm a different artist, so it needs to be in a different key. And maybe not sometimes, but a lot of times, if I'm going to sing a song by a female, I'm going to have to change the key. Uh, 
how do you can you tell them once you know what resonance is and how it feels and how it's supposed to sound and how your voice flows when you're resonant um you can hear when someone's being resonant if they're not being resonant a lot of times it's choppy or the vibrato is kind of heavy there's just certain characteristics that are part of a resonant voice and it varies from person to person so i don't want to say hard and fast um but usually the vibrato is more brilliant um they sing through passaggios a lot better um they transition into from chest to head voice a lot easier um they don't have like all a lot of these obvious breaks so all of those things um are incorporated in whether or not someone is singing with resonance If you want to sing runs like Brandy, then you have to practice what Brandy does. I know who Molly Music is. I don't really have thoughts other than I think he's great. Okay, ladies and gents. Again, my website, delisa.com. Um, of course, you can sign up for lessons as well. If you want vocal consultations, you can do that. If you want um, a vocal, basically a personal vocal analysis, not one that I'm going to air to the world, but one that will just come directly to you. You can get that on my site as well. Um, but no, there's not a specific exercise. Um, you just kind of have to sing through it. There's not an exercise that tackles mucus. Oh, sorry. I was scrolled too far down. Is it possible to sing low notes in mixed voice? Yeah, I would say so. Or at least tell yourself you're singing in mixed voice so that you're um, 